The Vampire Coast is all mine! Mm. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. <laughs> What's up Strat fans, it's Colonel Strat, the Strategy Extraordinaire here. And today I'm going to take a look at the Vampire Coast. One of the most unique um, factions I've ever seen for a Total War. Um, they're undead pirates, something I've, you know, I've, I've heard of before. But, you know, it's something very interesting in the Total War Warhammer series itself and in just Warhammer and, and Total War itself, too. So it's one of my favorite ones to, like, just experiment. It's very out there, outlandish. Um, such a concept is just, you know, insane to the mind. But, you know, without, but, but even though it is, you know, kind of insane, it, it kind of met it kind of matches um, the character we'll be exploring today for their base guide, and that's Luther Harkon, who is literally an insane de undead pirate. Um, so he, even though they, they all, for this DLC, they all have different things for them, but I think Luther, Luther is probably the um, most, like, basic, even though um, him and Noctilus are still are both pretty basic. Noctilus has a lot more of a um, like, more like a Colossus heavy focus, um, whereas Luther is more towards, like, you know, plundering and against Lizardmen and all that and spell resistance and all that, so he, he is still, he, he's still specialized, but for not, not as specialized as the others, so I'm going to be exploring Luther Harkon today, and, um, what we're going to see um, let's dive into the Vampire Coast um, campaign mechanics. Bow to your king, free Bootas. That we will, Luther. That we will. Sorry about the fan, guys. It is very scorching in my room right now. Um, so, for the Vampire Coast, they have a very unique playstyle compared to others. So even though, you know, they are vampires, so they have access to raise dead, you know, their units um, are almost specifically ranged fo focus. Only a few of them only have melee forces. Um, even though they're not the greatest, they could still do a lot. Um, and sum up a whole army right there because they're vampires. Their buildings are pretty, pretty basic. Um, just like the others, um, there's not really anything super unique with their buildings. Um, even though they do have like some more some traps or piles that like like this one right here increases the gain from a curse and bounties treasure right. So like they do have some some unique buildings, but not it, nothing super unique. Um, they do have one that causes debuffs to enemies. Well, debuffs to um, I think it's your armies as well, and then you get, you know, buffs after you get it up. But um, that's a special round mark they have. Now um, they are a Warhammer 2 race, so they have access to rights, and their rights are Curse of the Sea Mist, which gives um, all your regions are covered in a cursed mist, causing attrition, just like the Sandstorm one for the Team Kings. 
Um, you're also immune to that attrition and you get vamp guard deployment for, uh, for all of these units. Um, and then the curse of eternal service, loyalty does not decline, which again, they have a loyalty mechanic, just like the Skaven and the, um, and the dark elves. And then on turn start, they have 50% chance to gain loyalty and then control plus five. The curse of the queen's cannon gives you the queen best unit will be, which will be available for recruitment. Queen best is insane. It's an insane artillery unit and it's really, really cool to have. And then you go, you get some replenishment as well. And then the Curse of the Bountiful Treasure gives you plus 50 treasury for every building owned from the buried treasure chain, which is a nice way to like sync up some gold. So I'm going to perform that curse for the Queen Bess. Bow to your king, free mm. Butas. There's Queen Bess right there. Come at me. That's an insane, insane unit. And then um, for their tech trees, still it's very basic but they do have several different ways to go um like savage cruise increases your capture punishment more missile strength more weapon strength and then um some attrition and then you get some admirals that you can get here when you have enough infamy i usually go for this one for the replenishment so there's some basic trees for that. They also have offices, which is pretty close to the Wood Elves and formerly the Imperials offices. Um, so you get like special um, you know, special uh, bonuses for them, like Fleet Secretary, you know, get some upkeep reduction, Fleet Sailing Admiral, you know, Fleet Treasurer, Fleet Engineer, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And they, they give various buffs to that Lord's Army and to the faction uh, overall. And then um, I think there's also... Uh, I don't know if that's just extra words. And then there's also the treasure maps and pieces of the eight. So um, the treasure maps are what you're going to be searching for. So, you know, it's just like a standard pirate adventure. You're going to be searching for Riddle of the Map Maker here. And you know you just have to wait a few turns for the treasure map to pop, pop, and then you can find the pieces of the eight of these gold of these balloons, and then you get uh, you know some regiment renown for that one. And I think you get certain regiment renowns um, in the um, in the in the mortal empires, but um, in Warhammer 2 you'd get special bonuses as well for this. All right, and then the final thing on the screen to talk about because their diplomacy is not too not too Everywhere. good either is this screen so the sea shanties um you get them from increasing your infamy and fighting these infamous pirates to get the sea shanties here see she's sea shanty verse and then you can apply them to the spear he here and you get like you know the first shanty and then the second part of it and then the third now i don't know um in immortal empires if you could still slay the murworm like like that was the story of Warhammer 2 but um, you do get a nice um, augment to your folks, um, to, your, to your guys, um, that really does help your armies out in right now. So that's basically what the, um, vamp the Vampire Coast um, gameplay is on the campaign level. But let's get into some army composition now. Hey, Strat fans, here we are with my tier one. So it looks a little basic, I know, with all the, you know, deckhands and all that. But the deckhands mob um, are actually very, very good. So for all of you that don't know, the zombie deckhands mob, um, there's another unit that has a missile ability that some consider better. But I think these guys are better because they do better with, like, the melee. So they're able to stay in the melee more because um, they're like melee centric so I usually take them um, just to, to help with the melee now for my back line or I will put it in the front because it's a gunpowder unit um, I have the zombie pirate gunnery mob so the gun gunnery mob um, with, I, I get the ones with handguns because they're really really good they have a high power they're, they're just like handgunners but zombies so um, they're pretty self-explanatory. High armor piercing missile damage. Um, they're very, very good. And then for the start, I start with scurvy dogs, which are pretty much just like the, you know, just, just the Vampire Coast version of like the dogs. 
So they help with dealing with enemy missile troops that could soak in these low tier guys. So I am going to keep them around here so we can go around and deal with their missile infantry. So now for the heroes, um, of course we have good old um, Luther Harkon leading from the front. And then I have a vampire fleet captain with the lore of the deep. Um, because the lore of the deep is very interesting with all of its different spells. Um, it's a really good lore. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. And I usually keep one on hand. And then a gunnery right to help bolster the um, the gunnery troops. So with that further further ado, let's get started in this battle against the Empire. All right. We're gonna wait for the Empire to get ready and have our skirmish on. Every dogs are gonna wait. Now you gotta play more defensively with these guys when you first start, because they will get you know because they're they're vampire units, so they're gonna crumble after so long. So you're going to want to try to get as much powder on the enemy as possible. Come on, you going to fire? Come on guys, fire. That's probably because of the hill. Try to swoop around. Not like these guys catch us. Yeah, they already did catch us with some missile fire. Get these arrow units. Yeah, there we go. Scurvy dogs are going to help a lot with dealing with these uh, missile troops in the back. Because the gunnery mobs are going to suffer with that. Now let's do a spell. Well, we can increase our accuracy with this spell. No, I'm going to do a wind spell. Let's do a wind. That'll be perfect. Yeah, time it perfectly. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Alright. I'll move around. Try to get through to their flanks. I smell blood! Fleet Captain! From the Maelstrom! Finger on the trigger! The good thing about the scurvy dogs is they can run away. They just chase the guys that they have to. Tide call spell. Nice wind spell on these guys. Yeah, there we go. On my way! Oh, it is a spellcaster. Okay, well, you won't let me do that on you. So, oh well.
dick hands. Oh, Keep them routing. You gotta break them. There's a lot of micromanaging in the beginning because you gotta you don't have that good of units. So you need to micromanage a little bit. Fleet captain! I, I love doing that. I love doing it, man. Just, Meat knife yar. Dick hands. All right, there's the army losses. All right. That was a pretty decent army against a pretty decent army. We took a fair bit of casualties, but again, you know, there's a lot of micromanaging in the beginning because you don't have that good of units to rely on. But it does get better the more two you do. So let's go on to a tier two. Alright, and here we are to tier 2, Strat fans. So, um, you've seen a few differences. So, um, we replaced our um, skeleton warriors, our, or um, I think it was Zabi Deckhand Pirates mob, um, with our sirens. Sirens are really good. Um, they do have a weakness, being that they have no armor and only physical resist. But, they, but those physical resist they have is over 50%. So, they're really good whenever you use them against a foe like this, which. You know, if you're playing Luther, you're going to be playing against a lot of physical factions, not many factions that do magic damage. Um, but by the time you deal with those magic damaging factions, you'll be able to replace these guys. So for the time being, they are better. Um, and also in the back, we've replaced, completely reduced, replaced our handgunners with deck gunners. Deck gunners are insanely better. They're kind of like a weapon team, so you got to, you know, they're very volatile. But once you get them to fire, they're going to be really, really good at, ki at killing things. Um, and then on, on the skies, we have deck droppers with handguns now. These deck droppers are really good. They have um, extra powder, which makes them do more damage. And uh, they have very high armor piercing. And they're really, really good for mid to late tier. And then we also have um, cannonades, which are our first um, artillery unit. So the cannonades are very, very good as well for, for an artillery unit. And it really shows that the Vampire Coast is like a, a better version of the Vampire Counts. Um, just, you know, with how much firepower they can field. And then of course we have Luther in all his glory standing here in the front. And then um, for my two other heroes, I put them both on rotting Leviathans, my Vampire Fleet Captain, and the Gunnery Wright. So without further ado, let's go into this battle against our hated foe, the Lizardmen. Right. Try to close this gap. Okay, I think they're gonna go around. Don't surprise me. Well, we're starting to fire. That's good, and we got armor piercing, so we're gonna be able to do a lot of damage to these lizards. Check me, Sultan. All right, let's do a um, tide. Focus down those, uh, those guys. To the front. Let's get some rotting leviathans out. This spawn. The gas rock. 
Get here! Gonna wait while well, focus down the um, hero. Alright, let's try to focus the cannonades on this blob over here. Fleet Captain! Then we have this neat little vortex that I'm also going to apply to this blob. Nice little tentacle vortex. Yeah, it's doing a lot of damage. There we go. And also disrupting them as well, which is always good. The sirens are holding, which is good. Got a little bit of a glitch there, but we're good. We want to get, uh, wanna get them out of there. Luther, charge in melee combat, take them out. Because we need to help out the sirens up front. We need to do more damage to those guys over there. Because it's that blob there that's causing the most amount of damage. Sirens go up there, help them out. Right, let's do another tidal wave. Yeah, on these guys. Maybe we can get this one mopped up. There we go. Where's my Morn Ghoul? Shit, my Morn Ghoul has been doing nothing. Mongol, really, really good. Really good unit to have. Fucking scary as can be, but it's really good to have. We lost, I think we're gonna lose this uh, siren unit. But it's okay, because we've uh, dealt most of the damage to them and they're routing. So they've, they've served their purpose. Yeah. My Mongol just chilled there, didn't do nothing. I should have been using him. Let's at least look at him in action. Because he's definitely going to be here for the next round, though. Yeah. He's a really good charging hero to help amplify damage. Alrighty. So we lost one unit, but uh, we did still wipe the floor of them, so it probably still will be a good victory. Yep, decisive. Alright, so let's go into a tier 3 now. Alright, guys, and the, the final one here is the tier 3 army. So, for this, it's quite a mix up of units. So, um, what we're going to be having is um, we have these cool little units called Death Guard. Now, Death Guard, Death Guard, um, Death, like, like the Deep Guard. Um, I can never say it right. They're really, really good units. They have 90 armor, which makes them very like, heavy armored. They're anti-infantry. Um, they have that uh, special bonus versus infantry as well, and frenzy. Which means they're a very good frontline unit. And I usually always take these guys for, for mid to late game, um, because they're, they're very, very good. Um, and they'll hold the line incredibly well. Now behind them, we have Morn Ghouls, and this is the Regiment of Renown version, the Night Terrors. The other side, we have the, the regular Morgul's. Very, very good armor-piercing anti-infantry um, with a hundred weapon strength. They're very good. Um, they're like a mo they're they're a monstrous infantry, so they're nice to bolster. And then um, in the middle here, we have a rotting leviathan, which is a very good um, monster unit. It's uh, it's more of it's more of a, 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 a melee unit, so it's meant to get into the thick of it. But it does have it does have um, a couple of zombie pirates on it to shoot, um, and then um, oh, standing on the sides of it are the Necrofest Colossus. These are very very big units with um, a big old cannon so that has demoralizing flaming attacks. They're really good. Um, I believe. I don't know. That's just a bandage. Okay. Um, but it's like a walking ship, so it's really really good. It's got. Um, 
very good armor piercing missiles and the infantry um, over 700 missile attacks they are very strong and this this is why they're used as doom stacks for a while for a lot so you could really make the doom stack out of these and it's very easy to see why all right and of course we have our captain of the deep and our gunnery white and our mongol hunter as well and then in the back, our missile inf our missile units are missile monsters this time. We have the, the um, rotting Prometheans gunnery mob. It's only about 12 of them, but they have 40 missile strength, uh, 77 weapon strength, and 120 armor. They're really, really good at, uh, you know, staying alive for a gunnery mob. So I really try to, um, you know, change out the other the deck gunners for them. But uh, it really depends on the situation. Sometimes the deck gunners are better. Sometimes these guys are better. Um, so, I, it really depends on your situation, but I like using these guys a lot. So that's why I wanted to show them. And then in the very rear, we have the Queen Bess. Now this, this right here is insane. It's got a special round with monstrous impact. And it's got, you know, it's only got a limited amount of ammunition, but a really good range, really high armor piercing value. It's gonna do a lot of damage. Then finally, on, on his Death Street Terror Geist is Luther Harkon himself on his little zombie Death Street Terror Geist. And um, I believe yeah, he is that disrupted, which increases, which reduces physical resist of enemies now. And um, yeah, he's, he's a lot better now with his Death Street Terror Geist on it. Alrighty, so with that, let's go into this final battle. Um, we're going up against the High Elves. Let's show them one four. I know. Okay, we're gonna have to prepare. set up a nice defensive position as defensive as we can get it and then rush at them from there thing is these uh, we have a lot of things that have an insane range like the uh, Necrofex Colossus is already attacking Looks like they're moving a lot of their Loth and Sea Guard and all that on that side. Let's move in. Try to, try to hold them here. Get the Warren Ghouls. Go after these guys. After them, we best fire at the ranged units. Wait, no, I don't want this one. All right, let's see. Where's a nice blob? There's a nice blob. Let's take them out. Man, come on. I want to fight this phoenix all the time. Up. 
They're lagging. They're lagging. Let's get them. Show us! Yeah, they've started to fall back. We gotta chase them down. That we do. Thing is, we have very good units that can really destroy the enemy, and we have nothing that's gonna skirmish. So. And plus, we got our magic too. To like a, a wild goose chase because we just gotta chase the enemy until they eventually break. I'll drink soon. Right, there we go, that's breaking them. And there we are, man. That's how you do it. And like I said, even though we didn't use a lot of gunpowder units with this one, we still all our units do a high level melee of missile damage. Making them very, very effective. But look at that. It's insane. Alrighty, and that concludes our army compositions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, so let's wrap this thing up now. Alrighty, strat fans. So that concludes the Yeehole Scurvy Dog Pirates. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this guide. Please let me know how I did and, um, you know, because I'm always looking to improve and do better content for y'all. And I did see the uh, reveal yesterday about the new Total War. I am planning on covering it. In fact, I'm going to, I'm probably going to do a special video on Friday um, talking about it. Um, either that or a, another Let's Play. Um, but it really depends on how I'm feeling and how much time I have. Because I am running out of time uh, during the week because um, I have to put in more hours to work um, to be able to pay for the wedding. But uh, rest assured, more videos are coming and I am going to talk about it and I hope to um, play the new um, Total War, the new historical title that comes out and you know make a series for that for you guys as well. So without further ado, Strat fans, this is Colonel Strat, the Strategy Extraordinaire, signing off. Keep it strategic. Good, good night.